Hey, how's it going everyone? In this video, let's go over how to write functions in Viper. First, I'll show you a basic example, and then we'll talk about visibility, and then talk about mutability. Visibility declares who can call this function. And mutability declares if the function can write to the blockchain or not. So, write to blockchain question mark all right so first let me show you a basic example of a function in viper so we'll say external and then we'll say pure for now don't worry what these declarations mean i'll explain them in details when we go over visibility and mutability all this is saying here is that this function can be called from outside of the contract. And peer means that this will be a read-only function. I'll name the function simple. And the function can take multiple inputs. So for example, we'll say x is of type uint256. Another input named b will be a boolean. And lastly, we'll throw in a string. So we'll say s is of type string at most 10 characters. Now, a function can return multiple outputs, and we can declare that by typing an arrow. And inside the parentheses, we'll say the first output is uint256. The second output will be a boolean. And the third output will be a string with at most 100 characters. And lastly, we'll put a colon, and that's how you declare a function signature. Let's now write the body of the function. For the first output, we'll need to return a uint. So we'll say return parentheses, and we'll just return x plus one. We need the second output to be a boolean, so we'll just say not b. Since b is a boolean here, we're just negating it. And lastly, we'll return a string by taking the original string and adding in some extra characters. We can do that by saying concat, parentheses, s, and then we'll put in a question mark. All right, so let's just quickly go over what this function will do. The first declaration external tells us that this function can be called from outside this contract. Peer tells us that this function is read-only. The name of the function is simple. It takes in three inputs of type uint, boolean, and string. For the output, it will return a uint, boolean, and also a string. And we return x plus 1, not b, and string with a question mark by using the concat function. So that's a basic example. Let's now talk about visibility. Visibility declares that who can call this function. So let me write this down. Who can call this function? And the two visibilities that you can declare are either internal or external. Internal means that the function can only be called inside this contract. On the other hand, external means that that function can only be called from outside of this contract. Let's start with an example of an external function. And again, external means that that function can only be called from outside this contract. So we'll declare it as external. And then say that this function is read-only by saying at view. Later when we go over mutability, I'll explain the difference between peer and view functions. We'll name the function ext func. And for example, we'll just take in a uint for input. And for the output, it will return a uint. For the output, let's just multiply the input by itself. So we'll say return x multiplied by x. So this is an example of an external function now I'm going to show you an example of an internal function. And this will give you a better understanding of the difference between internal and external functions. 
All right, so let's go over an example of a internal function. And internal means that the function can only be called from inside this contract. We declare internal function by saying internal and we'll make this a pure function. So it will be a read only function and we'll name it int func. And for this example, we'll just take in two uints. And then let's just output a uint 256 and a boolean. And for the body of the function, we'll just return the addition of the input and let's just return true. So what is the difference between internal and external functions? Internal means that this function can only be called inside this contract. So once this contract is deployed, we won't be able to call this init function. On the other hand, external means that this function can only be called from outside of this contract. So once the contract is deployed, we will be able to call this function, but we won't be able to call this function inside the contract. So for example, if you try to call an external function inside the contract, so here by saying self dot ext func one, two, three, then this will not compile since you're trying to call an external function, which can only be called from outside the contract. On the other hand, we can call this internal function inside here. So by saying self dot int func, we will pass in some random number one and two. And this will compile since we're calling an internal function. Now notice that this function is returning two outputs. So I'm going to show you how to capture the output over here. So first we'll need to declare some variables to capture the outputs. The first output is a uint. So I'll just say i is of type uint256 and the initial value is 1. The second output for the init function is a boolean. So we'll capture the output in a variable named b type boolean and we need to set the initial value for this variable so for now we'll just say false and to capture the output from this function we'll type in parentheses and then the first output is a uint the second output is a boolean and then put an equal sign so that's how you capture an output from another function all right, let's now talk about mutability. And mutability means does the function write to the blockchain? So I'll write it here, does it write to blockchain? The four types of mutabilities are peer, view, non-payable, and payable. Peer and view are read-only functions. The difference between peer and view is that peer does not read any state variables or any environment variables. And environment variables are variables like message.sender, message.value, block that timestamp. Non-payable and payable declares whether a function can receive ether or not. Non-payable, as the name suggests, means that the function does not accept any ether. On the other hand, payable means that the function can accept it. Let's see an example of a pure function. So I'll declare it as external. And I'll declare it as peer. And we'll name it peer func. And for the input, we'll just pass in a uint. And it will output a boolean. And we'll just return x greater than 2. So why is this a pure function? 
Well, it's because it doesn't write anything to the blockchain and it does not read any state variables or environment variables. Let's see an example of a view function in contrast. So you'll say external and then declare as view. We'll name it view font and for the input, we'll just also pass in a uint. For the output, we'll return a uint and an address. And we'll return x plus a state variable called self dot num, which I'll define later. And we'll also return the caller of this function by saying message dot sender. And back up top, we'll declare a state variable num public uint 256. So let's go over the difference between peer and view function. This is a view function because it does not write to the blockchain, so it is a read-only function, but it is not a peer function since it is reading a state variable called num and also accessing a environment variable called message.sender. These two are read-only functions, so let's take a look at a function that writes to the blockchain. So let's first declare a state variable to write to. So back at top, I'll say message is equal to public string at most 10 characters. I'm going to scroll back down and we'll define a function as external and it's not going to be a peer or a view function since it's going to be writing to the blockchain and I'll define it as write something and it's going to take in a message of string at most 10 characters and it returns nothing so I'll just put a semicolon. We'll update the state variable message by saying self dot message is equal to underscore message so this is a function that is not view or peer function since it writes to the blockchain. And it is also a non-payable function since it is not declared as payable. And this means that you won't be able to send any ether to this function. So let's now take a look at a function that is payable, which means that this function can accept ether. So we'll say, external and then say payable we'll name it receive ether the amount of ether that was sent will be stored in a variable called message dot value so for this example we'll store the value that was sent in a state variable called value by saying self dot value is equal to message dot value and we haven't defined this state variable yet so I'll score up and then define value public uint 256 I'm going to scroll back down so what this function does is when you call this function receive ether and send some ether the amount of ether that was sent will be stored in a variable called message.value and then we'll store that value in a state variable called value. So if you send one ether, this value will be equal to one ether. If you send two ether, this value will be equal to two ether. Alright, so that was an example of a payable function. For the last example, I want to show you an example of a payable constructor, which means that you can send ether when the contract is deployed. So we'll say external and then also payable and then we'll define the constructor with def two underscores in it 
two underscores, semicolon. The account that created this contract will be stored in the variable called message.sender. So we'll store it in a variable called owner. So we'll say self dot owner is equal to message dot sender. And since we haven't declared the state variable yet, I'll declare it here by saying owner is equal to address. And for this example, I'll just capture the amount of ether that was sent when this contract was deployed by saying self dot value is equal to message dot value. Let's make sure that this contract compiles. So I'm going to open my terminal and then type viper source func.by. The contract compiled, so let's now see a demo in Remix. So I'm going to copy this code, open Remix, and then activate Viper. And then create a Viper file called funk.by and then paste the code. I'll compile this contract by clicking on the Viper icon, clicking on Remote Compiler, and then hit Compile. Once it's successfully compiled, we'll deploy the contract by clicking on this icon. And we'll deploy this contract sending one ether and then hitting deploy. Once the contract is deployed, I'm going to scroll down and you'll see the contract that was deployed. So I'm going to click on this arrow and let's call some functions. So I'm going to scroll down. The owner state variable will be the address that deployed this contract. So in this case, the owner will be this account over here. And remember that we sent one ether, so let's check the value by clicking on this state variable called value. And we can see that one ether was set. Now notice that we declared the internal function here. So we shouldn't be able to call this function from outside of this contract. And you can see here that we don't have any function called init func. All right, so that was an example of functions in Viper. For each function, you'll have to declare the visibility and the mutability. Visibility declares who can call the function. Can it be called from outside the contract? Then you'll have to declare it as external. Or if you're only going to call the function from within the contract, then you'll have to declare it as internal. Mutability means does the function write to the blockchain. Peer and view functions do not write to the blockchain. They are read-only functions. The difference between the two is that view functions read from state and environment variables. You can also declare a function to be payable, and this means that that function will be able to accept either. I hope you found this video helpful. Thanks for watching and see you later.